The human spirit was designed to endure and overcome. It has so much power, such that when it has overcome, it can hold memory of its experiences and yet be fully present to enjoy the current joys and victories that life presents to it. I believe that if we know more about each other, we can learn more and be gracious to each other. The concepts that you hold about life are not necessarily true. They're limited to your exposure. The day you get comprehension of this, you'll be more kind, patient, and deal with people more graciously. I welcome you to a place of grace, the Knowledge Hub edition. Hello everybody, welcome to the Knowledge Hub. Well, in this world, we got millionaires and we got multi-millionaires. Well, today we have a woman who is that. We've got Mara Chiorodi, who is a civil engineer by profession. And today she's going to help us understand how to make money. Well, in this industry, Mara, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Babungu. <laughs> you know, talking to you, Pella must compose myself, <laughs> look like a professional woman as well, because, mm. well, you, you, you've come far. Yes. You know, when someone hears that uh, Murero is uh, this big shot in the industry, it's quite difficult to can see oneself where you are because it feels like, ah, maybe she was born like that. Maybe perhaps so that we are all on the same ground. Take us to how you were brought up, where you grew up, just so we understand if it was humble beginnings. Okay. Thank you. Um, I grew up from a, from a village uh, called Murenje. Mm -hmm. outside the uh, Tehando in Limpopo province. So um, I, I'm the last born actually uh, oh. from my mother, my late mother okay. and my late father. <clears throat> we are two boys, two girls and uh, two boys. So um, I went to my primary school in the in Murenje and okay. my high school as well uh, at the same village. Basically, I think I was one of the of the top stu students. So you were forever metric. bright, you were forever bright. Yes, in metric. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of those kids who are like, uh, you know what, if I don't take position number one, oh, it's, wow. a, it's a big deal for me. So from, I don't know, grade, uh, from standard one, actually, mm. until matric, wow. I used to just be on position number one. Wow. Yes. But yes. looking at where you're coming from, mm. I want to quickly rush to your tertiary education. Mm. From Murenje is your high school, right? Murenje, it's a village, and then uh, there's Murenje Primary School, yes. there's uh, High School. So mm. I did my primary and my high school in Murenje, oh, in wow. the village. So, yes. but uh, when you went to varsity, which mm. institution did you go to? I went to University of Johannesburg. It was then a technical in Whitwater's Rent. Okay. That's when now I, I enrolled for civil engineering. Mm. Uh, I did my uh, national diploma and then I did my degree. And then that's where my, my, my career started. Until Were you I bright as well when you got to varsity or you struggled? I never struggled. I think... Um, <laughs> Okay, I passed and I finished within the record time. Well, so, still a flying marks. Like, you know, Apella <clears throat> must tell the truth. I, I, I think I got in mm -hmm. just through understanding. And I, I don't think I'm that bright and academic. I think I, I can understand all kinds of subjects. Uh, so only the finishing, I just finished. There mm -hmm. was no brightness on my academic record. Okay. <laughs> so when you finished your UJ studies, mm -hmm. You are doing your practicals and stuff. Take us through the journey of your how you got from UJ doing your prax into corporate and then into business. Okay. I started my internship uh, at a company called BT Mongwen Associates. It was a hundred percent black owned company. Mm. We're doing a consulting work. Okay. So it was consulting in um, everything in engineering, civil and building works. Okay. So. Um, I did that for a year. After that, I was employed uh, full time. I was heading a design uh, office. Like, uh, well, like your career is just flowing. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no break here. So. <laughs> I was heading the design office after just um, finishing my internship. Mm. Yeah, I think the company saw potential in me. So I did a um, uh, road storm water, sewer and water. And then we did the water towers, outdoor sewers. Uh, I did a lot of buildings as well in the design office. Mm. So I was heading that department. 
after two years of my service, I was then promoted to be a director of the company. Amen. Yes. You know, two uh, years of working. And then I was, that's when I was, I got exposed in the management now. And I interact with, uh, with the clients. I had to ensure that uh, the company is running, the cash flow is coming in, you know. Uh, I, so I was no, exposed. No, how old are you at that stage? I was um, 24. Sure. Yes, I was 24 years when I was promoted to be a director. Wow. And then we are a director in, in that com company. Company, yes. And then what happens after that? After that company, and then I decided, let me go on my own. Because I used to do a lot of uh, freelancing work mm. after, after, after hours. I would do design work for different companies uh, just for my skill. But um, did you find that when you had to um, start your own company, mm. did you have to do it first as a side hustle for mm. you to gather clients and capital? Or it was just, I'm jumping because I'm confident? Obviously, like I said, I used to do a lot of free freelancing work. Mm. So with that, I'll get at least uh, something on the side to build, a, you know, the mm. book value on the other side. Yes. And then since I was exposed to, to different clients, uh, because I was the director, I used to do marketing as well for yes. the company. Mm. So it was not difficult not at difficult, all. Yes. So the transition was smooth mm. uh, for me. So when I went on my own, Things were easy. Like it was it's, a running it machine. It was a running yeah. machine. It was there already. Oh, so it wow. was not difficult. So, Kashalasha, have you had difficulties in your career? Not really. To be honest with you, not really. You are I the, don't you, remember any like, difficulties. Really, you are, I think you're one of the finest civil engineers that have a career that just blossomed and they understand the benefits of being an engineer. Yeah. What are some of the projects that you've had to work with in terms uh, of size? I want to know the, the, the types of projects and the sizes of the projects that you've been working on. Currently or in the past? Uh, both. Okay. I'll start with this uh, difficult project that I'm doing at the moment. Oh, wow. It's a, a mixed-use development mm. in the north of Pretoria. Okay. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a project called Twain. Okay. Um, it's an integrated human settlement. It's a concept of a smart city. Oh. That's where like uh, residents, they need to stay there, they need to work, mm. and they also need to play. Okay. So we are mm. housing around uh, close to 13,000 uh, households mm -hmm. um, in that uh, development. So on the other portion, we've got AgriCity. AgriCity is a new concept altogether. Okay. So this project uh, has been challenging because of the funding. The fund, there's different funding models. Yes. Because it's a long-term uh, project. I can tell you if uh, I can just calculate, but it was two years ago when we did the uh, estimates, it comes to close to 3.2 billion. Wait, no, no, I'm yes. really So at this you moment, know? we are just doing uh, the planning of the of, of the township. That's wow. when now you start with the town planners. You come with the engineers, you do design of services, mm. and then you do the houses. Yes. Then later on, you come in with your schools, you come in with your office parks, you come in with your retail as well. Wow. And then you do your agri portion. So that project has been exciting, but it's challenging because we need funding. And the funding is not easy. When you government. say you need funding, does mm. that mean that this project was initiated by you guys? It's not you responding to a client's needs. We responded to a to 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 a tender to a proposal yes. uh, that was called by Human Settlement. Okay. Uh, they called developers to mm. give proposals in terms of uh, uh, the land that they need to be developed for this concept. Mm. So basically, it's a it's a partnership. You need to come in as a private developer, mm. and then also the government comes in with the with the low cost development because yes. you start with the with the low cost, and then you go to other types of houses, and then other things uh, afterwards. So it's a it's a it's a partnership, and you need to go out there and look for funders okay. also. Yes. Mm. So the the type of funding that I was talking about, it's you need to go out there and look for funding from other people because government cannot consume everything; they yes. can only do so much. Okay, because mm. now when you're talking about this project, it looks like you've got a very tight schedule on mm. a normal day-to-day -day basis. Yes. What does a typical day look for you, like for you when you are heading a, an organization? Okay, I'll just summarize it in a week. Mm. On Mondays and Tuesdays, we always do our progress meetings in the office. Mm. That's when now uh, everyone gives their, the project team gives their status quo and the progress of what they are working on in each project. Mm. And then... 
you plan for, for, for the week. That's Monday and Tuesday. So my day, like those two days are very active for me. Then Wednesday, that's when now I, I, I tend to do my office work. That's when I start responding to emails, making sure that uh, there's invoices, making sure that there's payments to be done, you know, just to do the general uh, CEO duty mm. on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, I do outside meetings because in this industry, you need to be relevant. Mm. You need to be aligned every time because mm. things are changing. Mm. So I do my outside meetings on Thursdays and Fridays. Meeting my clients, making sure that, uh, you know what, I keep that relationship mm. and also uh, establishing new relationships. Mm. So, and then it's a weekend. Oh, like <laughs> you, you practically don't rest during the week. It's that busy. It's hectic during mm. the week. But you know, uh, when a person is hearing you, uh, in fact, I think I deprived people. I didn't even ask the name of your organization. And here I am assuming everybody knows. <laughs> What's the name of your company? Um, I, it's Makore Group. Mm. Makore Group, it's a, it's, a, it's a group of companies. Yes. So my division, basically I'm a CEO of a property development. Yes. I'm a CEO of a consulting, which is a MDP consulting. Okay. Yes. Do you find that as a woman mm. in a male-dominated industry, you are disrespected in certain areas or your knowledge and experience just gains you a free pass in, in those platforms? To be honest, the society, as you know, and the stereotype, they tend to doubt a leadership as a woman. Yes. You understand. So, and I think uh, with my experience, I've, I've seen that uh, for women to fit in, they try to develop this male attitude mm. in business, you know, to be commanding, to be aggressive, you know, um, so that they can fit in. Mm. But with me, as a woman CEO, I've learned to be true to myself and... Mm. Uh, you know what? I think it's my good, own voice. I think it's just good. Yes. You are so certain about your design mm. skills. You are certain about your qualifications. Mm. It just makes you understand that you're not here because of some equity issues. Yes. You are here because you, you care. Yes. Yeah, because mm. I studied what I'm doing and I'm a woman. I'm also a professional registered. Mm. So you tick all the boxes. Yes. Yes. And then what what has that uh, PR number, the professional registration number done for you? Like I am an engineer, I'm not mm. registered. I'm trying to speak to women mm. who are not registered. That might be inspired from your story. What, what opportunities has it availed for you? Firstly, for you to run a consulting company, it's mm. a, a, in most of the clients nowadays, it's a requirement mm. that as a director or as a, as, a, as a CEO, you need to be registered yes. with the Engineering Council of South Africa. Yeah. Yes, in most of the clients now, it's a requirement. True. So with that only, mm. you've got... Um, you are a woman, you mm. tick a box. Now you've got experience, it's, mm. another, it's another box. And now you are professionally registered in mm. a male-dominated uh, field. Yes. And you know, looking at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the numbers, there's discrepancies versus men and women who are like uh, professionally registered. Yes. So you stand a good chance. True. So Very for true. me, you get a best preference. So it has worked for me, to be honest with you, because uh, I always get uh, first preferences as a woman. Mm. and end up getting more jobs because of that. And talking about mm. jobs, during now the COVID period, how did COVID affect you guys as an organization? Honestly with you, um, I'll first say most of the companies has, uh, has gone under, mm. construction companies. You can check the big five construction companies. Most of them, they are gone. Mm. But with our business, we we'll, we'll always manage to to keep afloat. Mm. Uh, we plan. We don't just plan for now. Mm. We plan for for long term. Mm. We plan for the next three years. Mm. For in case if there's no project, yes, uh, what's going to happen to our company? Mm. The company must be stable. Uh, people must get paid. You understand? Mm. And with um, the type of the business that we are doing, because we do both construction and consulting. Yes, you are just raking it. Like, <laughs> I just smell money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is. But I'm saying both businesses at least they they, they support each other yes. because the other one is more on the time based. Mm. You sell your time. You don't yes. have to have capital mm. to to is, to, to yeah. do a project. Mm. I just go and consult and I get my money. Yes. But on the other side, you need the uh, funding. So mm. if the other one is not doing well, you can always say uh, support oh, okay. the other business. Yeah. But in terms of um, the, the 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 crisis that we are facing which is the pandemic, COVID-19, mm. uh, we managed to, to pull through. Yes. We were not affected at all because we always plan ahead. 
Okay, that's very mm. good. And then I know, Mrano, you've been a millionaire for a long time. I'm so curious. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm so curious. No, no, you can't even like this. When did you become a millionaire? Don't, <sighs> don't, don't play humble here on us. It's okay to be a I mean, I'm a thousandaire. I mean, it's okay to be a millionaire. <laughs> okay, I will say personally, uh, I think I was at the age of, at, at the age of 25. I, mean, I already tested I, the million. You know, <laughs> I don't even know where I was. <laughs> at the age of 25. It's a long time. So, yeah, like I said, I've been doing hustling since um, early stages of my career. Like, I would do, do side jobs mm. and then I will make money and save it. You know, even before I went to corporate, like, I could accumulate some fuel. Like, does money still surprise you? Like, when, ish, zero, and there are just so many of them. You know, to be honest with you, we have to keep the business running. Mm. So, uh. when it comes... The business must run, and uh, you don't get excited about uh, numbers in mm. your in your in your in your account. Yes, yes, yeah, true. I think so, that is important to ensure, like mm. separating yourself yes. from the business yeah. money, because you might think, yes. hey, you've got multis and multis of it. We separate that a yeah. lot. Mm. Business is business, personal is personal, because you always say, uh, you know what? You always think about a gardener who's working for you mm. from the gardener. Uh, to senior engineers or sen to managers, mm. how many families you are feeding? Yes, yes, you understand. Mm. So it's not even about you as a person; mm. it's about making impact. Yes, yeah. But do you find that as a woman heading such a big organization, mm. that the people, the men that you are leading, who are also professional engineers, mm. do they give it the respect that is due to you, or you you have a lot of HR cases? Because nobody, nobody listens. To be honest with you, um, we don't really have a lot of cases. Mm. Uh, you just have to, to be professional. You do things uh, as per the code of conduct, mm. uh, the way we are trained in, uh, in school, or how you need to do things uh, uh, from Engineering Council of South Africa. Because, yeah, there's work ethics, there's uh, engineering ethics as well. Mm. So they do listen. They do listen, despite I'm a woman. Yes. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't have issues with respect at all. Okay, which is mm. a good thing. But what, there's something that I've observed from mm. industry operators mm. that there's so much corruption mm. in both the consultancy field and the construction field. Mm. How do you manage to maneuver as an organization? Uh, our organization, it's anti, anti corruption. Yeah, we don't promote mm. uh, corruption at all. Yes. We do things, um, you know, as per the book. Yeah. You understand? We follow all the, the processes for you to get the job. Mm. We've got a QMS system in-house. You understand? Mm. So all the boxes you must tick. If you are tendering for a job, we have to tick all of them so mm. that we can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can get a project. Like, you know, I'm listening to your career. You've mm. never struggled. What do you struggle with in life? So that we want to see if I, there's something we can relate with you. Like, what do you struggle with? <gasps> Career-wise? No, generally, because you're too excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I need to, because socially, I think I'm okay. Like, like uh, If I'm outside the um, office, I'm a very social person, even though mm. I'm reserved. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy for for a stranger to just come into my space. But once I'm comfortable with you, mm. then I start opening up. Mm. Uh, yeah, maybe socially, maybe that because I've got boundaries sometimes. But besides that, I'm Now just... that you brought social, how do, you spend, how do you spend your, this millions of yours? How do you, how, what is a typical fun, fun day for you? Okay, you, to be honest, during the week it's hectic. Mm. But in between, I always find the... Um, time to go away mm. i do small vacations there and there when i'm not busy mm. uh, i love traveling mm. i i love shopping and i love going out i love fine dining so that's where i reward myself mm. is and then i've always heard a lot of women who are in corporate mm. doing well they say hey my, when it comes to relationships mm. darling oh darling no clue it's not that ship is not moving what is your view on that? I want you to speak about it from a general mm. perspective mm. and then bring it personally. Okay, it's um, as a CEO of the company, like women CEO, mm. sometimes okay. we tend to forget that we are not in the boardroom. 
when you get home. Mm. You forget that you are a wife or a mother, and then you try to implement what you implement at the office. Mm. I think that's when our relationship crash. True. Yeah, with my view. Mm. But personally for me, uh, when I go home, I'm still a mother. I'm a mother of a... I've got a son. Okay. Yeah, I still have to do my duties. Mm. I still have to do the homeworks. Mm. And also, I mean, in relationships, I try to to balance this thing. You could, and, but don't you find that you are balancing? Mm. But because hey, you carry accolades, when people, by the very nature of being a man, mm. they become intimidated. Yes. Yeah. I found that a lot in the past. That uh, men would just say, "Yo, this woman is just." too much mm. because you are doing well uh, you know you had this uh, big orga organization you make decisions tough decisions mm. uh, and then you are um, okay in terms of uh, financially you are mm. you are independent in yes. your own way mm. you don't ask for anything True. from anyone mm. and you know with our society men wants to feel in power in charge yes you must ask for things you know you just ask yes just you must ask, ask for <laughs> Uh, you know, I'd, can you please do this and this for me? Yes. So with me, because I've been independent for so long, uh, I've, I've so been... What can, what can you really ask? Like, what can you ask? Except for a helicopter, maybe or a jet. <laughs> what can you ask? No, I just need, I just ask for someone to be themselves and then uh, they just have to respect me and embrace me. Mm. You understand? Don't pull me down. Yes. Embrace me so that I can grow more. I That's what as, you need. And it's another challenge that as a successful woman, you find yourself having to dim your light mm. to accommodate the other mm. person, which is what a lot of women deal with. I don't know if you've experienced it in your side of the world as well. When it comes to me, I don't compromise myself. Mm. I don't compromise my values and what I believe in. Mm. I don't compromise my career. Yes. yes. It's either you are in my life, you need to know your position. Yes. We are not going to debate about... Uh, if I need to, uh, if I'm going for a late meeting, you don't go to a late meeting. No, I imagine. Yes, mm -hmm. I have meetings. Sometimes I'll come home at uh, at at one o'clock or two o'clock. I'll have meetings on weekends. So if someone is in my life, they need, they to, need understand. to understand. They need to understand that. Yes, true. so that is kind of the job that I do. There's no time limitations. Mm -mm. It moves every day, mm. any time. I can be at work. Yes, because this uh, industry it involves a lot of. Uh, meetings outside office meetings yes yes and uh, you are just very few women that are on your level with the level of exposure that you have there's not a lot of black women on that level what are you doing to bring up other women that are also equally qualified as you um i've got a few engineers that i have um, trained mm. personally as women Yes. Because uh, in Engineering Council of South Africa, you need to be a mentor as mm -hmm. well. You need to mentor someone, you need to train someone so that they become a registered um, a engineer. Yes. So with me, I chose a lot of women. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've trained few. Most of them, they are now registered. Mm. And also when it comes to business, if you want advice, if you want some coaching, I'm available. I always give them guidance. This is where you can start. This is how I manage to do it. Mm. You understand? I'm not um, a person who don't want to share information with other people. Yeah, because it's, you know I what, do share what, a lot. what I've observed is that we'll, you'll find that us who are writing the tender documentation mm. for the mm. market, we are always saying that we want experience. And uh, this upcoming smaller companies that are just starting, they don't have those mm. kind of experiences. Do you guys give, uh, do you assist when I need a sub here and there just to uplift upcoming yes. contractors? We do a lot of majority of our projects, mm. you can say 80%, we do subcontracting. Okay. And then with subcontracting, we classify you from, if it's a construction, we classify you from grade one mm. up to the last grade because okay. we are HCEPE, AGBPE. You are gone. So, you know you are alone up there, man. You are so, so high. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is we classify them and we allocate work based on uh, on your skill and based on on if you are a starter okay, mm. obviously we need to allocate what is uh, right for you yes but with with time you grow and then you can upgrade your cidb and then eventually you can be eight one day like True. us mm. yes so we've got programs in place in the company 
like I said, we do a lot of subcontracting and we give opportunities to women or, mm. or youth or even men, we give them opportunity. Okay. And then how do you create a work-life balance? Uh, with that, obviously, I've got uh, a responsibility for both mm. the business and the personal or family. Mm. So you need to devote time uh, to both because it's crucial mm. so that you can create a work-life balance. So um, I do a lot of, I spend a lot of time with my family on weekends. Okay. Um, uh, with my sister, with my other people in the family, cousins. Mm. Uh, we always come together so that we can catch up. And also I spend a lot of time with my son. Okay. We go out. So I got that uh, work-life balance mm. kind of a life. Okay. I'm not just a CEO of the company. Oh, no, and yeah. you just, I don't go and, just and, and work, be a normal, work, work. A, a normal woman. Okay. I do that a lot. Okay, we need mm. to be closing. We are, we are out of time. Okay. What is your greatest fear? Okay, my greatest fear, and it was uh, during um, this pandemic, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it was last year. Because we couldn't predict how long the, 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 the lockdown will be. Mm. Like I said previously, we try to keep our business afloat mm. because you feed so many so many families. Yes. So that was my fear. Mm. But from now on, I think the, the, the worst is over. True. We are fine. It's you, so, really are. you really are. I think the worst is over. Truly. Yeah, the worst is over. Yeah. So to be honest with you, I'm not fearing anything. And then, my worst fear was last year. And then from your successful career journey, mm. Which is the moment that you are going to rate as this was the best thing that I've experienced while working as a civil engineer? Uh, the best thing that I've experienced, it's um, okay, developing concepts into reality. Mm. Because I've been involved in projects where uh, it's greenfield, there's nothing, it's yes. grass. Mm. And then seeing um, someone taking their house giving mm. them a key, mm. they go and unlock that house. Yes. True. And I'm involved and it's my product. Mm. Yes. I feel so fulfilled. Okay. No, that's good. Can mm. you please encourage women? There are a lot of women that um, they tell that they're dependent on their husbands or just their partners for income or they're aspiring to do the things that you're doing, but they kind of feel out of reach. What can you say to us just so that maybe we can feel that if Murado could do it, I possibly can, if I can just uh, decide to do it as well. The sky is the limit. Mm. Um, go for what you believe in. Mm. Like I said, the, the road to success is paved by losses, by mistakes, you know, by disappointments. Mm. But eventually it leads you to where you are going. Mm. As long as you are focusing on the ultimate uh, dis destination. True. So everything is possible. It's just, it starts with you. Believe mm. in yourself. Okay. If I can do it, somebody else can do it. True. Yes. Considering you also come from Murenji. I, I mean, come from a guys. humble beginnings. Like mm. from a village, from the deep rural village. Mm. But now here I am. And then what does the future look like for Moraro in closing? Uh, the future looks bright. Too bright. The future looks too bright. <laughs> you know, with our model in the company, if uh, we always try to venture into other things mm. we've got another department which is the mining department mm. you understand can i just be your bag <laughs> <laughs> so that's why i'm saying um there's nothing that can stop us mm. yes we always plan for the worst to say if construction and consulting uh, you know something happens yes what is next mm. yes oh wow, wow. so we always bran branch into different uh, into different uh, things wow well, we are out of time. I'm so glad you came through. Like, um, listen, obviously, because of uh, I'm listening to your story and mm. trying to identify how you've gone through. But what I'm identifying as the key theme, you are just very dedicated. Mm. Obviously, you're very intelligent. But in whatever you do, you keep your focus on it. And I think as a woman, that's something that I'm going to take out of this mm. conversation. And I wish you all the best for your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Okay, thanks for having me. Well, I hope you guys at home are going to start D-Fest. Then you're going to fly and venture into your dreams. And we're going to see you fly as well. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time. Bye.